guys going on? Peter J. Cruz here. I want to do a quick little video today uh, showing you on uh, showing you some EQ tricks, uh, mainly to preserve headroom in your mixes. Uh, stuff that really is unimportant anyway, and I'm just going to show you a quick trick to trim some of it out to improve the headroom that you have available to you as you're doing your mixes and your projects and so forth. Uh, and then uh, you know, I'll be starting a series on the whole uh, behind the scenes type of thing on the recording of the Atlanta Suite, my uh, upcoming CD. So stay tuned for that. And there'll be giveaways probably announced as well as we go forward. But um, anyway, let me go ahead and pull it up into uh, Sonar X2. I'm going to pull up the uh, inspector here and I'm going to show you the EQ module right over here. Um, and basically you can see you've got your four bands, you've got your you know, low band, your high band low mids, high mids, and of course they're all color coded with the knobs. But what's um, what we're going to notice today, uh, I'm just going to play with the EQs here. As I'm raising these EQs, you can see the curve now goes way up. All this below the line here is all headroom that's being used by whatever track this is, whether it's guitars or vocals or whatever. So as you start playing with EQ, you're using more of the, e the available uh, bandwidth, I guess you could say, um, of your mix. So, of course, that's going to be not good because then you've got tracks that are using more than others and they're going to be more dominant in the mix and you might try to get them out and you try to lower them in the, in the with the fader and then you can't hear them right all because they're using too much EQ. So, a uh, trick I've found is, and I've learned this online or through some books that I was reading or whatever, you got the high-pass filter here and a low-pass filter here. Well, guess what? Your, your electric guitar, your uh, cymbals, whatever, they don't need a lot of bass end. I mean, you can trim all that off without affecting the sound so much. So, I mean, for example, I think it's set to like 40 hertz right now. I, I can raise this for, like, say, a guitar to like 100. I sometimes put it as high as 120 because my guitars don't really have a lot of low end anyway. I don't down, you know, I don't detune or anything. So this will be pretty good for, for a guitar about right here or so. Now you'll notice that curve that we had before, all that extra headroom, we've just chopped all this, you know, this dark black out. That's all now free for something else to use. And then on the high end, guitars don't, oops, guitars don't use a whole lot of high end either. I mean, speakers really don't produce more than, I think, like 7K or so. So let me go and raise this to about 7, 7.1 is usually where, about, where, about where I have it. Um, and then you, know, you can use your little slopes here to kind of make it exaggerate the slope or, you know, make it steeper or whatever. So, um, oh, wrong knob. I'll go to 120. And then you can adjust the slope here, more exaggerated. Now, you've freed up all this energy here in the sound spectrum to be used by other instruments. Now, of course, I'll do this to all my all my tracks, except, well, excuse me, I'll do it to all my tracks. Uh, like, of course, like, you know, cymbals and guitars and so forth. Uh, they'll be more or less like this. Cymbals, I may actually raise up a little bit higher because you don't need low bass free energy frequencies for, for your cymbals and, and hi-hats, that sort of thing. So I'll probably leave them a little bit higher. But when you start getting to stuff like bass guitar and uh, bass drum, well, those are the, the foundation of your, of, your, of your rhythm, your beat, uh, and they occupy that lower end of the frequency spectrum. So what I do is I'll say, for example, I'll do on my bass drum, I'll bring this down to about 60, and I'll leave it as a sharp little dip here, pretty aggressive, uh, at 60. And then on my bass guitar, I might raise that up to, say, about 80 or so. Um, this way, the bass drum and the, the bass guitar don't, are not necessarily fighting over the same low frequencies. They more or less have sort of their own space to work with. And then you'll do your other EQ and so forth uh, around you know, what you need for your particular mix. But you can see now the difference in all this extra freed up headroom because as you, if you multiply out all that extra headroom that was occupying before, even if the instrument wasn't using it, the signal is carrying all this energy. Even though you, there's nothing audible per se, um, there's energy in that signal somewhere. And if you allow that, s that energy to pass through, well, now that energy is going to be taking up space in your mix. Um, so by trimming out extra low end you don't need for certain tracks and the high end you're not going to need for certain tracks, then you're, you're conserving um, 
uh, uh, you're conserving these these frequencies, these energies, where you can then turn around and then use these for other elements of your mix. So therefore, you know, uh, your mix will be a lot more clear, a lot easier to manage as you start working with all the various tracks. Because I mean, if you were to add up, say, all the high frequencies or whatever for all the different tracks that even though you can't hear it, all that amount is going to add up to, to basically dBs on your master fader that are going to be creeping up on you. And you're going to be like, gosh, you know, I've got, you know, I'm already clipping. I need to, you know, bring the fader down, bring the fader down, bring the fader down. Well, next, next thing you know, you got a mix that's really, really weak and not very punchy, not very loud because you have to keep lower the levels because you keep clipping because there's so much energy in that mix. Even stuff you can't hear, it carries on through and it makes your, your, your mixing job a lot harder. So anyway, I just want to throw that out there to you guys. Um, and uh, that's all I had for today. And uh, I'll be working on some other videos, as I said, as I work on the Atlanta Suite. I've uh, got pretty much things ready to go. I think next up I'll probably do a DAW video kind of overview of my my uh, workstation and so forth. We've already seen the inside. I'll probably show you a little bit of, of uh, how I've got everything kind of configured on my desk and so forth. So anyway, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Rock on, and we will catch you later. <laughs>